Hi everybody, welcome to the AOE2 AI scripting tutorial number 5. This video we will look at unit and building or object IDs, defining and using constants, training villages and debugging the AI via manual inputs. In the description you can find link 4 which is a link to the unit and building or object IDs. This is made thanks to AI scripters in the past. This is a version from the 2000s valid for the Conqueror's version. AI scripter Leif Erikson 114 is working on an updated version at the moment. The same link 4 should work automatically for the new updated version once it comes out. So no problem there with bookmarking this. If not, I'll update link 4 in the description. We will use the line ID column for units and the unit ID column for buildings which are actually building IDs. A better column heading would have been object ID or unit and building IDs for this column. For units, if there are no line IDs, we can use group ID or unit ID, whichever serves our purpose. Remember, group IDs don't work for all commands we will see in the future. We have to use the ID number, but can change the name if we want to. See the explanation about constants. As a general practice, we do use the names in this reference to make our scripts readable for others with the exception of group ID we use class instead of group. Remember in the last video with the scouting we used the livestock ID 958. This we will look up. Type in sheep for instance and we see sheep and turkeys are defined here livestock group 958. So what shall we do? We're going to define a constant using the following syntax. A constant definition is also an element so this has to be put between brackets, the constant name and the constant value. Usually we group the constants at the top of our script or put them in a separate file using level 2 programming. For constant names we can use any names we like unless already used by the system. Give names to values for readability like in this example. We define a constant, defconst, livestock class 958. We will just copy this or cut it is more correct it and paste it at the top livestock class 958 and we can substitute this with the constant we have defined. You must admit this is more readable than using the number. We save and we see if the program does what it's supposed to do. Set up scouting villages and scouts because no livestock have, has been found. Found livestock stop exploring with villages and they get to work. A constant value can have different names. Defcon's livestock class, like we've defined it, we can also name it Defcon sheep or turkeys in the same file. And then we have the choice to use either unit type count livestock class or unit type count sheep or turkeys.
save, restart the game. Set up scouting villages and scouts. Found livestock, stop exploring with villages. So it doesn't matter which name we choose here, as long as the name corresponds with the correct value. It's correct to do this, DEFCONS no zero, DEFCONS wrong zero, DEFCONS nothing zero, and use the different words in different contexts in the programming for readability purposes. We can also use the same values for different names like total number of sheep 8 and in a totally different context dark age lumberjacks if you want 8 dark age lumberjacks for instance it doesn't matter using different names for the same value all for readability a constant name must only be defined once during a game which means we can't give different values to the same name. The computer won't know when we use the constant vils needed if we mean 5 or 10. It will give an error upon loading. We can load different constants for different situations and we will use some level 2 and level 4 programming for our example here. Load if defined Britain Civ Britain Civ in capitals, very important. Defconst starting Vils on sheep five because of the sh uh, bonus they get and if we will just copy paste this to speed things up. Load if not defined Britain Civ starting fields on sheep six. We will make a def rule. Which is true. Some level 4 programming, up chat data to player, my player number. I need percent D villages on sheep. The percent D is referenced here at the end, starting fills on sheep. Don't forget close brackets, disable self and close a bracket here. So depending on the civilization I have it will either tell me I need five villages on sheep or six villages on sheep because the percent D this reference here, starting fields on sheep. And the starting fields on sheep is defined if you are Britons for five, if you are not Britons, six. We will save and restart the game. I need five villages on sheep. This works. Only one def const will be loaded depending on the sieve in this game. This is not a double declaration like here, but we do have to watch out that we don't accidentally have double declarations when writing a script.
some constants are predefined uh, for level 1 programming but need to be defined for level 4 programming. We can use constants to define other constants. Uh, constants can also define strings. Now because of this fact here that some constants need to be defined for the level 4 programming even if it works in level 1 programming it is a good rule of thumb to define all researches all buildings and all units uh, at the beginning or in a separate file to not have bugs later on for the next examples we will define Eagle Warrior line and Scout Cavalry line. We first look in the list. Scout Cavalry line minus 286. and Eagle Warrior line minus 267 load if defined Aztec sieve def const my scouting unit eagle warrior line this is an example of a constant defining another constant in this case depending on the sif second defconst we will define text my sif i am the aztecs i have an eagle scout and if load if defined Britain sieve we can actually put that in here def const my scouting unit scout cavalry line def const text my sieve I am the Britons I have a scout cavalry and if then we will make a def rule Def rule unit type count my scouting unit equals one chat to player my player number text my sieve disable self. So this def rule will do some different things here. First it will check if we have a my scouting unit equals one. Where does it get the scouting unit ID from? It will get it depending on the civilization. It will check if it has an eagle warrior 
or it will check if it has a cavalry scout because the eagle warrior ID minus 267 will be put into my scouting unit as the scout cavalry line ID minus 286 will also be put into my scouting unit next the text my sieve this is the text will be put in that constant so it will then chat to us text my sieve depending on the sieve let's see hopefully this works I am the Britons I have a scout cavalry excellent to check the other programming we could quickly load the Aztecs You see it tells you now I need six villages on sheep, yes, and I am the Aztecs, I have an Eagle Scout. All the rest also works as expected. Excellent. Training villages. When training units, buildings, building buildings or researching researches, what a tongue twister. Always use the fact checkers can to avoid memory queue related bugs. This is very important. It's wrong to do this. Death rule true something and then train a villager. Or death rule uh, uh, food amount greater than 50 train villager. It's correct to do this. Can train villager train villager. Use a can train can build can research to check what does this fact check it checks if the training of the given unit can start in particular that the unit is available in the current civilization the tech tree prerequisites for training the unit are met the resources needed for training are available not counting escrow amounts. I put this in purple because this is something we will learn in a future video. That there is enough housing headroom for the unit and that also there is a building available uh, and not busy um, ready to start training the unit. The fact allows the use of unit line wildcard parameters for the unit. Before we train villages, I'll quickly explain that. We said we have defined, for instance, uh, the scout cavalry line. That's a unit line wildcard parameter. What does this encompass? If we look back at the unit IDs, Scout Cavalry line is the Scout Cavalry, the Light Cavalry and the Hussar. Meaning, if we train a Scout Cavalry line, it will train a Scout Cavalry or a Light Cavalry or a Hussar depending on what we have researched uh, up to that moment. Another example is if you train a militia man line it will train militias or men at arms or long swordsmen or two-handed swordsmen or champion depending on what's already researched uh, you don't have to write separate death rules for separate units 
if it's in the same line. So what do we do? Def rule. We check can train villager train villager. Now even though this will work as villager is one of the constants in the level 1 programming which don't need to be defined as a rule of thumb we do define villager to not have bugs once we use other levels of programming to look up we've got the table I think villages are at the top we'll use line ID villager 83 save Death rule can train villager train villager in this case we will not disable self as of course we want to keep training villagers up to a certain moment let's see what happens we see indeed it trains a villager after the villager is trained it won't queue up another one as one of the facts it checks is the housing headroom Debugging the AI using manual inputs. When watching your AI from its perspective, you can do certain actions manually to help the AI along for debugging and testing reasons. Hi, my name is Tutorial AI. I have three villages, set up scouting villages and scout, and need six villages on sheep. <laughs> We see that it's trained a villager, but we are pop capped. To debug manually, and this is possible when we look at our AI from its perspective, we can select villages, for instance, and manually Ouvert. build a house. It lets us do this. Once the house is built, we will have more population room and the death rule for training villages should activate as we can see here in the meanwhile as we have programmed the scout keeps scouting and the villagers keep at work creating new villages in the TC. Excellent. A small addendum to this video is when we load a civilization which is not Britain's neither Aztecs we get the following error. Invalid identify my scouting units. This is logic because if we are neither the Britons nor the Aztecs, then my scouting unit constant nor text my civ is defined while it is used further down in this def rule. It's actually not very well programmed of me. So we just block comment this for now as of course we want to try out different civilizations in the future. and the error has gone. I thank you for watching this tutorial video and hope to see you again uh, for the next one. Bye!